Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to build this blaze farm for Minecraft 1.9. Now this blaze farm is like a lot of other blaze farms. It probably looks pretty similar, right? Well actually it's got something that means it operates a little bit different and that is a built-in crusher to the funnel system. So the idea of a blaze farm is that we funnel the blazes from the spawning area down into a spot where we can kill them. And 9 times out of 10 these blaze farms involve pressing a button to crush all of the blazes and then there'll be a one hit kill. However with our design what we do is we crush them as we're funneling them down into the killing area down below. Now because this is 1.9 we have the sweep attack which means that this area is deliberately free wide so that when we hit a blaze in the middle we're also going to hit the blazes on either side and if you've got a diamond sword you'll do enough damage to kill all of them in one go. So we hit them, we get loads of that XP, and remember each XP orb from a blaze is worth 10 XP, and we also get a load of blaze rods that will be picked up by the hoppers below the carpet. So that's the concept of how this blaze farm works, I want to go over it with you in more detail, and the first thing that I should make you aware of is that this uses the piston translocator bug that is present in Minecraft 1.9. Now because it's in 1.9, a major release, it's extremely likely that it's going to stay and there is no comment or word from Mojang about this piston behavior. Now what it does is it moves entities or mobs through the piston when the piston arm extends. So it will take it from one side to the other and we use that heavily here. There you go, did you see them move across? And that means that this could potentially break in future versions. So check the description box down below if you're not using Minecraft 1.9 and there will be some information about if it works or not. Currently in the 1.10 snapshots it still works. Okay let's take a look at the redstone and the controls that we use to make the farm. A quick disclaimer, this is probably not the most compact redstone that there is and you could probably make it a lot better. If you are a redstoner feel free to change any of the wiring that I have done, however what I have done gets the job done. So we have a button, we have a lever, the button is going to activate the dispensers at the top and that lava when it fills up that area at the top will disable all blazes from spawning. Now this is really simple, there's a wire going into some torches, the torches go all the way to the top and then they reach the dispensers with the lava in. And the lever on the right hand side controls two other clocks which funnel and crush the blazes and bring them down to this area. One of those clocks is controlling the slime blocks which move back and forth. Any blazes that fall into that middle area with this system will get funneled through down into the middle. So when we turn this on you'll see that the redstone branches off in two different directions. This right here is the clock for the slime blocks that move back and forth and if you want to tweak the timing of that and make it a little bit faster you can do so by controlling these repeaters. As for the other clock it controls you shouldn't change the timing at all as it controls the crusher. So around the back here the signal comes to an EFO hopper clock which it overrides and stops when you turn the lever on. Now at the other end of that there's some redstone that goes through to three different pistons. So let's go into spectator mode to explain this. We have a piston on this side, another one on this side over here and a crusher in the middle. So when the crusher isn't crushing this piston at the front here will fire which means any crushed blazes will be moved from there into our killing chamber and then after that's happened the piston on the other side is going to fire to bring blazes from here into the crushing area and then the crusher is going to start again bring them all the way down to one hit and then the, rep the process is repeated over again. So why is the floor here made out of glass? It's because other mobs won't be able to spawn on it and we've got a glass window at the front so that from down below you can look up into the farm and see if there's lava up the top. Now what the blazes do in this room is they fall down onto the floor and then they'll stand there. Eventually they will pathfind to a different part of the room and that means they fall into the funnel in the middle. Now this concept was discovered by Mizuma Games so full credit to them. It is a big innovation for blaze farms. If you'd like to check out their original blaze farm that used this design you can find a link in the description box. If you've been watching my Hermitcraft series, you might be wondering why this farm is a little bit different from the one I built on the Hermitcraft server. That is because a viewer of mine tweeted me a much better solution to the funneling system. So huge thank you to Abros7 for tweeting me this. I do appreciate it. If you're watching, thank you. And with this suggestion, we have now made the farm a lot more compact and faster too, which is really awesome. Anyway, it's about time that we jumped into it and started this tutorial. 
Just in case you didn't know, the Blaze Spawner mob cage will be found in a nether fortress, and the type that you want to find is one like this inside or load of netherrack. If it is out over a lava lake, then you've got the added risk of building this entire farm over a lava lake, which is not very pleasant. So hopefully you can find one like this. You may have noticed that I'm also in peaceful mode at the moment. That's for the sake of this tutorial. Of course, you're going to be doing this in survival, so I've got some advice for you. The first thing we want to do is disable this blaze spawner, which means we're going to be fighting some blazes. So I recommend coming in with some decent armor, diamond and enchanted. Now make sure that you have the fire protection enchantment on at least one piece of armor. It is much better at reducing fire damage than protection is it will mean you take less damage and you'll also be on fire for a lot less as well as that you want to have a good sword a weapon to attack them with maybe a bow as well if you're in an open area and of course a shield the reason why you want a shield is because if you block successfully you will negate all of the damage from a blaze and you won't get set on fire as well which is really really useful now you're also going to want to bring some cobblestone because what we want to do to disable this spawner is boxing the spawning area around it so no more blazes will spawn while we build our farm as well as that i also recommend bringing a good supply of food so you can regenerate your health, a ender pearl to get you out of a sticky situation, and a fire resistance potion, especially if you're building this over a lava lake. If you fall down into it, that will save your life. And of course, remember, you're in a nether fortress, so bring a bucket of milk just in case you run into a wither skeleton. So the first part is probably going to be the hardest because we've got to disable the blazes which means while we're digging and trying to place cobblestone they will be spawning and we will be fighting them but what we want to do is go out by four blocks in each direction like this and you want to start at the same height as the blaze spawner and you want to go above it by one as well like this so that means we've also got to go four blocks out in this direction so that's one two three four like that over here again you can see we've got to dig some of this away around us and then over on this side one two three four and then what we want to do is turn it into a giant cube so all of this space between this block and the one over there needs to be filled in with cobblestone and once you've done that i'd recommend digging a little bit of space around it as well just so you know what you're working with so that step may have taken you a while. Don't worry about it, it's quite a tricky part of building the blaze farm. And if you're wondering why we're not putting blocks down here, it's because a blaze is too tall and it tries to spawn it at its feet. So they will see the block above and it won't be able to spawn it. And that also means that a blaze trying to spawn here is too tall. And so our ceiling needs to be at this height right here. So I've also cleared out this big area around this box. You could do that yourself as well. The walls of this thing are going to be out here. So I've given myself you know, a lot of extra room and that's for the sake of this tutorial. Anyway, what I will do next is build the first part of our farm. That's the big room around this with the floor that leads to the trap and then we'll discuss the dimensions so that you can successfully rebuild it as well. And just before we get to that it's probably a very good time to let you know what you're going to need to build this. Inside this chest we've got a lot of different things, some redstone, lava buckets and most of this is precise however some of the building blocks like the slabs, the glass, the andesite and the signs you'll probably have a couple of bits left over but basically you need to gather a chest full of resources pretty similar to this so pause the video make sure that you've got everything in there before you start building this farm. So a lot of construction has been done and don't worry we will go over everything one by one. Let's start off with this front wall right here. It's been left open so that we can peer inside. Of course you want to fill that up. What we want to look at is the middle of the room directly above the blaze spawner. There is a block here and that's so that we have two blocks above the blaze spawner so a blaze doesn't spawn there and just stand on the spawner. We want all of our blazes to drop down into the area down below. You may also notice there are some holes in the roof. We'll come back to that in a moment. That's so that we can place the dispensers. So basically there's just a wall around the cobblestone um, box that we already built. It goes down by 11 blocks. So this top one here all the way down to the bottom one is 11 blocks. If we go up to the top we have also slabbed the roof. This is to stop mobs spawning on it and there's going to be some redstone wires here as well. So don't worry too much about this at this moment. We'll come back to this when we do the redstone later on. So if we go a little bit further down there are six blocks in total before the glass starts at the front. This doesn't have to be exact though. You could have the glass a little bit lower if you wanted but there are five blocks of glass here. Then if we go inside you'll see the floor is made out of glass and it's the middle strip that is 
uh, left empty. So four blocks of glass on that side and four over there. Then directly below the spawner and our cobblestone we have a whole bunch of signs. You'll need to place these one onto the next. If you haven't done this before, you place one on the wall and then you click done and then you hold down shift and place another one. Now a little bit of a tip for you here, you don't have to press done, you can also press escape which might be slightly quicker for you. So basically you want to place them like that going across the entire room. Then when you've done that, what we'll do next is place the dispensers. So when we remove some cobblestone from this box, it's very likely that a blaze is going to spawn immediately. And that means that you should be prepared to fight one. You should also have a nice little platform prepared here just in case you get knocked off so you don't you know, fall to your death or anything like that. So what you want to do is start from the blaze spawner, go out by one, then two and then remove two blocks and place the dispenser and what did I say a place would spawn place the dispenser in the top facing downwards and then just remove these again and then you want to go to the next one so come over diagonal and by two blocks place another one of these dispensers and yeah you know what to do you've got to do it another two times over there and there the next step is to put the redstone on the roof, so if you want to pause the video and recreate exactly what you see, then you can do so. Basically we've just got redstone where the gaps are, and inside the dispensers we have our lava. Now the ones at the ends here don't need redstone on top of them because the block next to them will power them, so we can just fill that up as well. And then what we want to do is remove the cobblestone that's down below. So we're going to temporarily power this, that means that the lava has been activated, and then when we remove the cobblestone from down below, um, the lava is going to fall into place. So we can get rid of the cobblestone and we can stop the blazes spawning. So you're going to be doing this in survival and you're going to have to rely on a little bit of timing here because as you break the cobblestone the lava is going to fall down and then when you break the next one the lava flows over from the side so you can't see the one above it. So depending on what pick you're using you're going to have to think about the timing just to make sure that you break both blocks each time and then that way the lava will fall down and when you're done removing all of the cobblestone, um, then the lava is of course going to stop the blazes spawning. And then that means the lava is ready to be turned on and off, and we'll get to that bit later on in the farm. So what's next is all of the redstone down below, and it's such a jumble, I don't really know where to start. But I think starting with the killing chamber at the front makes a lot of sense. Let's try and build this from the ground up. So in order to put this in the correct position, you want to go to the middle and come down by three blocks, and this is where this little structure starts. So we've got five stairs in a row, and then a gap, and then another five stairs in a row. Behind them we've got these pillars that are three blocks. On the right we've got the lever, on the left we have the button. Then below the stairs at the front we have our three chests. We've got a carpet in the middle here, and below them are hoppers. So three pointing down, three pointing into the chests in front. Then behind that you've got this little section of blocks right here. So that should all be really, really quite simple. And then behind where the button is, we've got four blocks in a row. We need redstone here, so when we press the button we can send a signal all the way up to the top. And the way that we're going to do that is by using redstone torches. So the signal will travel up here. And when we place the last one, it actually activates the dispenser. So watch out for that. Make sure you don't accidentally turn this thing off. And then at the very top, we've got a block here so that that torch will power this redstone. And then there's a slab on top of it. So the redstone is a real jumble and it could easily get quite complicated. So I'm going to do my best to give you shots like this where you can simply pause the video and recreate exactly what you see on the screen. And luckily this sort of stuff is nice and easy to count due to the texture having that kind of border on the edge. But anyway, we're going to start from behind the lever here, placing down some redstone. We've got two pieces, then a repeater here on the default setting. Then we're going to go in this direction by one, two, three, four, and then just over here is where we have a repeater behind it. Two pieces of redstone to get to the corner and another one there. All of those on the default setting. Then when we get over here, we want a block here, a gap of four and a block there because this is going to be our EFO hopper clock. So we have our comparators pointing into each block. We're going to have hoppers pointing into one another. And on top, you're going to place a redstone like this and then have the sticky piston placed on the side of the redstone so they face inwards like that. Put your block of redstone on the top here. And at 1.9, I'm not sure if mobs can spawn on these blocks like a piston retracted or a redstone block just to be safe we're going to put some glass up there to stop them spawning then on this corner block right here we need some torches which are um, going to point into some repeaters and we've got two of them here they're going to be well all of them are going to be on the fourth setting this one is going to have a block in front of it which will power 
this piece of redstone that's going to point into a block which will have two torches on it as well just like this so one of them is then going to go over here they need to be on the fourth setting then we've got two pieces of redstone we need to go up a block here and then place a block on top of that one so the redstone that we place here doesn't connect and also for what we're building later on going to need an additional two blocks on the side of those repeaters so hopefully we haven't gone into this too fast there still is a bit more to build so over on this side we need a block at that height and then two blocks over here and the repeaters are going to be on the fourth setting and they're going to point into that block so they won't be powered at this point and then we need a piece of redstone on the top of that behind it we're going to have blocks like this and like that with a sticky piston here in fact you can just go ahead and put a block on top of it now so two pieces of redstone then a repeater over on this side pointing outwards and that needs to be on the second setting and then above that one right there we're going to have a block on the other side we're going to pop down here and uh, build some more redstone so it's just a block there then we're going to have one two three and a block at this height so I may I may leave behind the occasional block that you actually don't need just watch out for that doesn't make a difference really if it's there or not so the last thing to do is to put redstone across the middle so now I'm going to try and fly over to this corner again hopefully if you can pause the video and see most of what's going on there it should all look good let's also have a look at it from this side as well so I haven't talked about this part yet and don't worry I didn't forget to edit something in I've been waiting for the right moment to show you it because we're about to wire it in now so we got a row of blocks going all the way across from one side to the other and that is behind the gap in the middle so this bit is in line with our gap in the middle of the floor on the front side we've got glass which also has a gap in the middle so where the middle is over on this side we've got a furnace below it four blocks of slime in a row and behind it a sticky piston pointing into the slime then right there in that gap where I'm pointing you can sort of see it from the side there there is a glass block that needs to be there above the slime block then there's a gap and then a piston facing towards the furnace over on this side it's the exact same thing but it's just mirrored so build all of that and then we're going to wire it up we're going to start off with three blocks in the middle here this one's going to have a repeater on the third setting and then two pieces of redstone behind it one over here you may have noticed that this connected don't worry we're going to put a block there and disconnect that and behind that block we're going to have a torch with a block here so what you'll want to do is put a glass block here to prevent spawning and I did put a glass block in this place that's a bit of a mistake we should have put a furnace there to stop spawning because the glass gets attached to the slime blocks and in front of the furnace another glass one again because of this block which does actually get pushed up and down so you'll need two extra furnaces from what I included in that chest is what I'm trying to say so over here then what we're going to do is have three blocks in a row one in the middle we will put torches on either side and have blocks above them again to prevent spawning glass blocks will go on top of those ones and then on the inner side we need a torch there and same dealio on this side over here a torch right there now all we got to do is just wire up this part as well so up here we need to bring the redstone up we're going to have three blocks in a row again and on this side we've got another repeater pointing in on the third setting and then the redstone goes over in this direction we have a block right there we need a gap because well actually we don't um, what we do is we fill that up with glass which is something that I missed earlier and again on this side I put glass there it was a mistake you need a furnace on that spot a another block over here glass on top of it and a torch on the side of that block all right then more redstoning to do so we're going to go over to this torch we will place a, a block on top of it with some redstone behind it a block of glass again preventing spawns on this side a sticky piston facing upwards a block and then two blocks above that another block of glass to prevent spawns again so over here we're going to have a repeater on the second setting and then we will put in two blocks here we'll have three pieces of redstone so that comes on top of the bit that we've already built another one down here we're very repeater here on the second setting as well and in front of that we want to have a block then either side of that block we will have glass blocks so one there and one over here and then looking straight forward on either side we need a furnace here and a furnace there then the last bit for us to do is to do some more wiring on this side so we need a block there over here and at that height and then on those three that we just placed three pieces of redstone so this next bit should be the last bit what we've got to do is walk into this area place a piston here facing towards us 
go into the next bit, place another one right there. So both of those go in that direction. Then either side of these slime blocks, put down a couple of furnaces. Over here on the side of this block, a sticky piston and a block in front of it. Now this thing is sort of technically finished at this point, but what we need to do is fill in these gaps with glass and not that one right there because this is where the blazes are getting funneled through and that gap will stay like that because it needs to be powered by the redstone. So what we're doing is just filling in the glass so that the blazes will make their way into this area right here. So it's then at this height that you can start to, well actually no, it's back there. So that block right there is where you need to put your um, glass because the blazes are too high they're going to fit in all of this space and then we just bring it all the way forward so here is where we start to plug it up um, down at this height as well we need to put glass so can you see that going through like that so now there is a way through the middle for the blazes through the pistons and the crushers then they're going to drop down into the killing chamber down below and if it wasn't obvious, the reason that we built this little bit here out of glass is so you can see through it. When you're standing down below, it means you can look through this area and see the blaze spawner. And of course, every tutorial has its mistakes. This time I've made two. We need to put two blocks over here, a redstone torch on the front there, and two pieces of redstone on the top. That's just one of the things I forgot to do. The other one was to put some items into the hopper around the back. So just over here, put in 13 items into the hopper and then this thing is ready to go. But currently it is turned off, so I'm going to turn it on. We're going to do a test and find out if we build it correctly or not. And I need to remove that lava. Okay, we've built this thing successfully. And uh, here is a blaze coming into the middle being crushed. Another one has dropped into the area behind it. So then going to get pulled through down to this area. I've got another pro tip for you though, and that is to use looting on your sword. That affects the amount of uh, blaze rods that you will get. So I think we actually just missed it. <laughs> this thing will get pulled through in a second. There we go. And now they're ready to be killed. So the first batch of blazes in our new blaze farm. Bam, there they all go. So the redstone portion of this video took up way too much time. Unfortunately, I'm not the best redstoner there is. There is going to be a world download provided though, so you could download this and have a go at compacting all of this crazy wiring going on here. I'd also recommend downloading it and checking it out before you choose to build this. And if you can run two Minecrafts at once, then it's a great idea to have something like this open while you build it in survival. So if ever the tutorial gets a little bit foggy, you can open up the other world and check out the redstone directly. So that's it from me, this Minecraft tutorial. Do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like on the video. If you are not subscribed, then consider subscribing for more regular tutorials and check out the playlist of all the other tutorials we've done in the description box down below. There are now over 220, I think, last time I checked. And yeah, loads more things for you to build in Minecraft. Anyway, that's it from me, this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.